All right, my 118th scale hard body, basically an old 80s Land Cruiser style. This is the Katana. Now, I did an unboxing of this in my first run, and you might notice that it's quite noisy. Even with the hood up. Looks a little jumbled under there because I was doing some work. But I want to show you guys something that's very interesting about this. Okay, there's the screwdriver right here. I'm going to flip it upside down. I'm going to do one, two, three, four. Just lifting and getting all the wires out. Here is just the frame, the transmission and the motor, the ESC and receiver combo, and the front steering servo. Here is the lithium polymer battery it comes with. We're just going to kind of put it in the front here. Now I've made no changes other than just taking the body off. Are you ready? Is that remarkably quiet or what? So the body itself is causing acoustics. So yes, we can hear the ESC, but being inside this body that has an undercarriage as well as an interior with a hood, this hood is actually acting like a speaker box. It's amplifying the sound. I think the same thing is happening up there where it's actually making it louder than it is. Okay, so number one, I want to get rid of that ESC because that'll remove half of my issue, that irritating low control. People were saying that it doesn't look like it has very good uh, slow crawling ability. It does. Just depends on what you're doing how much input you give it. There we go. So I'm going to take this off. I'm going to lose my ability for lights and signaling. Well, I'll have my lights, but not the signals. But we'll see how this goes. Let's just start unplugging. Get rid of the battery, number one. Then we're going to get rid of the lights and the steering. Then basically, I can unplug the motor right here. It's just this easy, okay? I want you guys to realize that a lot of the companies that are out there that have different brand names are actually the same company. Like FMS that makes the 6x6 uh, 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 rock crawler, same ESC, same container it comes in as this rock hobby. You guys all ask me, you know, like, what are all these different names and get all these different brands? There really isn't a lot of different brands out there. There's only so many, and just like GMC and Chevy, uh, there's a lot of brands out there or manufacturers that just put out different brands, so you're attracted to different things. If you don't like one of the brands, you'll buy one of the others. That's basically the whole concept behind it. So I'm going to remove this ESC. What ESC? Well, here is the Skeep, my friends, my 124 scale uh, Axial SCX24 with rear steer. This one has a Hobby Wing Quick Run WP ESC in here, which basically means waterproof, fully programmable. I love the options on here, and it's fairly inexpensive compared to some others. Remember, you still have to introduce a uh, receiver system if you're removing the stock ESC. So what am I doing today? Well, as a more expensive option, and only because I'm repurposing this, this is a Tekken BXR. The footprint to this is so small. That's why I'm interested here, not just in the programmability, uh, but the small size of it, which means I'm gonna be able to put it in with no problem. On the other side, I've mounted up a five channel SR515. You heard me right. If I get a winch or lights or whatever I want, it can go into this and now it is waterproof through and through. I won't have any issue. I can just mount this up and we're gonna see how it changes the sound.
To make your job extra easy, if you're gonna do the same thing I'm doing, just cut the leads right off of your ESC because this is basically uh, fit for the pit now, right? We all know that. See you later. What we wanna do is, so it's already there. I'll just solder this motor, motor lead right to the ESC right now. Uh, same with the uh, battery hookup. That way I can use the same LiPo, same motor, no problem, and it's easy to drop in. And when you get everything mounted up, you're gonna have a mess of wires, so I always try to keep everything you know, nice and tidy. There's the motor and battery connector, and then here is the steering with the, uh, the Y splitter for the lights, plus an additional lead for the lights, which is going into an auxiliary channel, uh, and I have one open channel in there because I didn't want to stuff any more wires in there, but there it is, nice and tidy, with the and, uh, receiver antenna, and I'm just gonna go ahead and tuck this back on and see, well, hold on a second. I guess I could open, let's have a look at the, the mesh. I can see that there's grease on the outside here, but let's have a look at the mesh. Let's see here, come on. Ah, uh -huh. plastic gears. Interesting. Well, I'm not, not surprised. I should say white plastic gears. That is interesting. And the gear mesh is beautiful. It doesn't feel too tight. It's nice and like there's no binding. All right, so after I got everything installed, I undid the zip ties and I started moving the lines around, trying to bury them in and around, leaving my uh, ports right behind the servo and of course my ESC on its side. The lights are working on auxiliary channel one and I can close the top hood. That is exactly why I went with the more expensive Tekken uh, BXR. Uh, if you guys can find something smaller that works just as well, I encourage you to do that, but let's see if it's working well at all. Do the tires, good power there. And then the test of the noise. Oh, you hear that? That's Tekken BXR noise now. It's way quieter though, in my opinion. I actually don't mind that at all. <laughs> it sounds like it's tight, and it is, but I confirmed. So it's just the acoustics off of the body now, possibly the added weight, but the body isn't that heavy. I know folks will ask for me to uh, put it upside down so there's no weight on it. Let's hear that uh, drive line. So it's literally just the transmission and motor sound now, basically. There, every good 4x4 should have some dirt on it. Let's get it on! Okay, so my lights are set up on auxiliary one. I can turn them on and off just like that. In three, two, one, go. Something I thoroughly enjoy about this model already is just how it moves. The body roll, the weight, everything about it. Come on, hook up, buddy. No, we're gonna have to back up. That's okay, a little S turn never hurt anybody. I wish more people knew about S-turns and how it maneuvers their vehicle. It would definitely help in real life. In full-size life, I should say. All of this is real life. Come on, baby. There we go. Loving it. Keep her going on the teeter-totter. Seesaw to all the folks across the pond. Down we go. Just love the scaleness of it. Right down to the tire tread. Yes, clear. That sounds so much better to me. Yes, the drive line noise is there, but no more real bad whine from the ESC. Very capable. Oh, I'm in a rut. Uh oh. Back out, back out. <laughs> uh, that's gonna need some of that. That's a penalty, that's for sure. Gotta line up on that log properly. Over into the tires. Oh, good thing I got a good bumper on there. That would have hurt. Crawling, going up into the top area on the side. Oh, need some hookup, that's a gate. 
And every time I touch that flag, I would consider that a five second penalty. Or if I have to touch the vehicle with my hand, five second penalty. Oh, 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 there it goes. Beautiful scratch. This one's super small. That's what she said. But never to me. Yay. Oh, yeah. Turn it around as it bounces along. This should be a good bounce show. Let's see here. I'm going to go full speed over this just to get the hop effect. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> so all stock suspension, of course. Nothing has changed. Now eight, I've got to go through the other way, which is kind of silly. That's the way I set it up though. Oh, hey, oh. Hey, you like my little zen fountain here? Oh yes, what a climb and gate free. So nice. Coming up into another tough area. Oh, gate, that's okay. Down and around, boys. Oh, careful, careful, careful. I need like an extreme turn here. Oh, I'm binding the, the drive line. That's okay. Little Austin Powers. If you don't know who that is, you're very young. <laughs> I have to go up to gate 10. I have to turn around. Dang it. That's a convoluted way, hey? But it's one way to make your track longer. Do like a circle. Come on. That's embarrassing. There we are. There we are. Oh, gate right there. Damn it. Once you touch the gate, it's dead. Ah, oh, penalty for sure. Get up there. All right, well, there it is, guys. Nope, nope, can't do the outro yet. I know a lot of people will be asking me, you didn't look like you were slow crawling at all. Did it improve it at all? And the answer is absolutely it did. I had to set up the exponential, which is basically a throttle curve or a steering curve or whatever curve you want to put onto your radio. Mine is going to be for throttle, so it changes the amount of input you need for the vehicle to move. So I turned up the exponential on the high point, so as I start to go forward, it just kind of gets it to creep as I've pulled the trigger now halfway. The more, now the more I pull the trigger, the faster it will go, but if I want to just do some scale crawling, that's how I, would, how I would change it, and that's part of the advantage of changing the ESC and the radio. I'm just hung up here on my back end. Okay, okay, okay. You get it. Now, on with the outro. It didn't improve my driving, that's for sure, uh, but narrating and driving and learning a vehicle, I love all three challenges, especially when they come together at once. Tell me, guys. Let me know your thoughts uh, in the comment section below. You know I love to read the comments. I get back to as many as I can, but with so many videos, it is a challenge. But if you have any questions or comments, I love to read them. I'll see you in the next episode. If you want to watch one, here's one right now. Woo!